So I think there was uh, some really interesting uh, threads behind both of your presentations. I know they were quite different, the work that you guys were, were talking about, but uh, each of you talked to some extent about making things in different ways, better, smarter ways of making things. And Ben, you, know, you talked at the beginning about 3D printing and the promise for it. Um, you know, there's still a lot of us who don't really think about this every day. You said something really interesting. You said it's not like a Star Trek replicator. It's not this ability to all of a sudden have something appear in your house. But what is it? What is 3D printing really going to be used for? You mentioned something about the, per, you know, the future of personal fabrication. What is this future of personal fabrication? I think that the, the, uh, the, the real utility, like I mentioned in my, in my talk, that uh, 3D printing allows us to have is, is to allow designers to become their own fabrication crew. And like, you don't need a whole shop full of uh, machinists. You don't need a whole company in order to make prototypes. It, like uh, b Before th these additive fa fabrication machines, you might have needed a, a full injection mold molding tooling set up just to make a single one-off part or like a, someone to sculpt it. Or uh, It really takes a lot of the complexity of designing a part and fixturing it uh, out of uh, the task of designing. So designers can quickly test their, test their products before um, they scale them up for full-scale production. And that's really, it's used, really used as a design tool, um, and not just for um, making little you know, keychains and stuff. <laughs> right, well, in fact, 3D printing is already changing, Mark, what some of the parts that, you, that are made at GE. Can you talk a little bit about the advantages, um, both uh, in terms of time and money, but also in terms of performance of the parts that are made? Yeah, so 3D printing enables us to make parts. We just simply can't make any other way. There are some limitations that I won't spend the time describing to you in the way you make castings. We can only make certain structures. My, one of our researchers has a great quote. She says, complexity is free with 3D printing. So it's just as easy to make, easy to make a complex part as it is to make a simple part. And that opens up our design space incredibly. So we're using this technology in aircraft engines, as I mentioned, to make very complicated fuel nozzles for the combustion system. And to make that conventionally re would require 25 different brazing operations. It becomes completely economic, so we wouldn't do it without 3D printing. With 3D printing, we can make it in the blink of an eye. We're doing the same kind of thing in healthcare for ultrasound, and it's enabled us to make configurations and get a capability we couldn't otherwise get. So I, I think for those of us who aren't intimately familiar with manufacturing, the way I think about it, tell me if this is wrong, is that often you would have a block of a material and you would mill away the stuff you don't need. But with 3D printing, you can, only, you can put the material only where you need it. So you could have sort of internal contours, you could have gaps, so you only, only need the material where it's structurally important and then the, the part is lighter but just as strong. And if you're talking about something in an, in an aircraft, obviously weight is huge. Is that? Yeah, and it's far better use of the material too. Because just as you said, we would take a forging or a casting of a big part and then whittle it down to the size we want and throw all that other material away. Now we're building it up layer by layer and b using only the material that we need to get the configuration that's the one we want. And the, the, the third kind of fabrication process, you mentioned subtractive processes and additive processes. And the other one, the other big one is formative processes. So it's like taking, a, taking plastic and, and putting it into a bowl, mold kind of like what I was talking about. Um, and these processes all have their advantages and disadvantages and are appropriate for different materials. But I mean, so anybody who follows technology trends is hearing a lot about 3D printing right now. And I think it makes obvious sense in the, in the context that you're talking about at GE. Um, but you also said, Ben, that you know, it's not, it's true value isn't in making keychains. I think people might be curious whether there will be 3D printers in the home, will there be a need for it? Just as there was industrial printing for years and then now we all have home printers, there are industrial additive manufacturing processes and 3D printing machines that designers and prototypers might use. Will there be 3D printing, will, is there a useful um, uh, purpose for this in, in, in the homes of the future, do you think? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but uh, I think so. Um, just, uh, you can imagine, if you, had a, if you had a 3D printer in your home, 
um, what could you use it for? Like th generally 3D printers are good at printing things out of thermoplastics. So you imagine anything like a, like a fork, uh, like a plastic fork. Um, and uh, what, what are the things in your house that you could sort of change or modify? Like would you want to make a, a different part of your mouse? Or like your, your computer mouse? And, or your keyboard? Or make ergonomic adjustments to your workstation? Um, and that's the stuff you, we see a lot online already being made with these commercial 3D printers. So 3D printers are already in people's homes. This is like a reality right now. So maybe it's not a really valid question. <laughs> well, in the sense that it's not why. I mean, how many, I'm just kidding. Ra raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have a 3D printer in your home. I, I mean, I, I don't, but I know I'm also not. But no, fair, fair point. But a lot of this is, a lot, a lot of this is people ordering. Um, sort of one-offs, you can customize an iPhone case or something like that. I mean, that's, that's where we're at. Mm. But is there you know, a day when instead of my going to the party store to buy you know, certain kind of knickknacks for a party, I'm making them myself? You know, innovation sneaks up on you. Things happen that you just don't expect. You know, 20, 25 years ago, you'd have to have a supercomputer in a big room with air conditioning to do what your iPhone can do today. And now that's something we all expect as a daily part of our lives. So I think the, uh, the story is to be yet to be told on 3D printing. So if, if home 3D printing or 3D printing services on demand were to take off, Mark, how do you think that changes you know, the mass manufacturing landscape? I know that's not exactly what you're in the business of doing, but you've got expertise in this. Does this how does this change what we think of mass production or where things get mass produced or which things get mass produced? Yeah, but already it's changing the game. I, I mentioned briefly in my talk that we had a call for additive manufacturing. So what we did there was we said we want to have people give us their best thoughts on how to redesign a simple thing like a bracket as part of a jet engine. Now in a jet engine, you kill for every weight savings, okay? So this is a part that we probably on our own wouldn't have spent much time thinking about. We put a call out, we asked people to give us ideas. And what we found were very creative solutions for people who had to do, knew how to do 3D printing. And we found 75% weight savings on that part. We're gonna do a lot more of that. And what it means is all of you can engage with us in doing very creative, cool things. So tell me if this sounds feasible. In the future, there will be no re-gifting. That if you get something you don't like, you just melt it down and make feedstock for your home 3D printer. That, that's actually a, a good, good, good point, because uh, no 3D printer that I know of right now can actually reuse material in that way. So when you print something, you kind of throw it away. Uh, that's the only other option. Um, uh, so I think that might be a good next step for additive manufacturing, is being able to reprocess your prints. Um, so. Let's get on that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's something for GE to invent. All right, well, listen, you guys, thank you very much. Been, been good hearing, hearing from what, uh, what you guys foresee. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you.